Welcome back. We are going to be diving into a video today where we're going to be exploring ChatGPT's new native feature. We're able to analyze docs. This is going to be a really cool tutorial. I'm going to use two different types of files here. We're going to look at one docs that's going to be an essay and then one docs that's going to be a real transcript we've had at our business here. We're going to analyze both and leverage ChatGPT's new feature here, which is this little plus sign. This allows us to add different file types. If you want to learn how to do spreadsheets and excels, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I link it up there as well with you know analyzing pdfs i'm gonna link that up there as well as there's a bunch of different stuff we can do with this file edition now with chad gpt we don't need plugins anymore it's completely free let's go to jump in so i'm gonna be honest with you i haven't used this in the context of docs yet so i have no clue how good this is going to be but the first example we're going to be jumping in today is going to be uh looking at an essay i want to use this in the context if i was writing an essay maybe you know adding more sources summarizing a thesis statement let's just go ahead and see what its capabilities are so let's go ahead and add that file real quick Went ahead and looked online for like MLA formatted docs. Uh, I'm assuming these are from some type of like inst educational institution. They have like a 2023, 2022 version. So the first thing I'm gonna ask here is gonna be simply, uh, can you give me the thesis statement for this essay and also a paragraph or we'll say three point summary. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, it's been a while since I've been at school, so. <laughs> I'm going to try to refresh my brain on the type of stuff that is significant in an essay. But what I will tell you is that this works how I think it's going to work. This is going to be a huge advantage when it comes to just education in general and writing essays. All right. So we got thesis statement dedicated online communities promote cultural bias through informal community consensus. I haven't read this essay, by the way, either. So I just grabbed the random essay uh, regarding other cultures facilitated by language, simplification, alienation, and by digital platforms that encourage and prop propagation of such biases and we got three points here let's go ahead and look at the original essay real quick okay so this is the original essay here um it seems like the formatting wasn't perfect i did how to export it to uh docs it originally was a pdf so if i scroll down here this is the original essay here um you know obviously not the best formatting this is going to be a look a little bit better let me actually go ahead and give you the original one what it looked like and the, the day it's not that big of a deal when it comes to chat gpt as it's able to analyze data regardless I'll go ahead and show you what the original one looked like real quick. Okay, so I went ahead and pulled up the original here. As you see here, uh, this is the different relevant information here. And we can kind of scroll down here. You know, obviously we got our bibliography and stuff of this nature, works cited, that's what it is. And what we're gonna do here is the first one that I'm really curious about as from what I remember in college is you had to provide a certain amount of sources in your works cited. So let's first ask a question of based uh, how many sources are in the works cited and i just realized right now this could also be used in the context if you were a teacher to grade papers faster i suppose although i don't know how i don't know if that's a good thing but let's go ahead and see what this comes up with okay so it says nine sources here let's go ahead and see here we got one two three four five six seven eight nine okay so then there might have been a duplication here but it does look like there's around 10 sources here but it did say nine Actually, no, that is actually correct because this is just a carry on over this source. Okay, so we do have nine sources here. Now, the next question here is based on the contents of this essay, can you, uh, can you search online to find another source to back up thesis? Now, if this does this, which I think it's going to be able to do, because as we know, ChatGPT now has the ability to search online uh, on top of all of this. If this finds additional sources to back up this thesis, this just writing an essay now is, is as simple as, you know, eating candy, I suppose. Let's go ahead and see what it comes up with. Okay, so it supposedly found a possible journal here. So it did do a, you know, the type of sources that are wanted in a college context, an abstraction. Okay, so let's go ahead on like communities. Okay, let's go ahead and, and gut check this a little bit. Or, you know, take this a step further here. I'm going to say, can you find me a specific quote I can use to back up my thesis? As you probably already know, writing an essay, the most important part is backing up your thesis with evidence. And it does it. <laughs> essentially, we argue that this, essentially, we argue that it is around this critical size of substantial interactive communities emerge. This quote can be used to underscore the notion that once online communities reach a certain size, they are become substantial and therefore play a significant role in amplification of cultural biases. This is next level stuff. You would have to pay a good amount of money a couple years back. I mean, 
just to, uh, you know, like the fact that ChatGPT can do such stuff, it's like, you know, do business stuff, do personal stuff, do stuff about real estate, do stuff about code. This thing's all across the board here. And the fact that it can provide me a specific quote like that, uh, based off my thesis and my essay. I mean, I could have probably provided just a straight thesis here and I could have slowly built out my essay here. Uh, this is really powerful stuff here. One thing I also want to point out here is notice how ChatGPT has become so intuitive to the point that when you use the version that's all tools, we can add files, we can search the internet. I mean, this thing can, this can even analyze images. Let's go ahead and ask one last question in the context of an essay here. And let's go and see if we can do, uh, can you give me an additional paragraph on my essay? Now I'm not supporting plagiarism or whatever this is called in this context. I have no clue what the educational world considers AI generated stuff now, but as you see here, it, I mean, it was able to give me, actually, let's, let's take this one step further. I'm going to say, based on the quote you gave me, please cite it and place in a paragraph. Okay. So now we're getting an incorporated paragraph. Yeah. And it even quotes it like this. Wow. Look at that right there. Okay. Amazing. Let's go ahead and jump into our next example here. We're going to be looking at a transcript here and getting relevant information from that transcript. So just because we kind of went down a little bit of a rabbit hole, I'm going to start a new chat. This is always a good idea. If you find yourself getting inaccurate answers or, you know, you're going on a whole separate topic here. So we're done with essays. Let's create a new chat. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and add our file here. Okay, so here is the file we're going to be playing around with today. This is a transcript call. The purpose of this call was to set up a service for an AI automation for a real estate company. We're going to go ahead and play around with this a little bit. If you're familiar with this channel, you know we played around with this in the past, and you know we've done it in the context of setting it up with automation softwares like Zapier. E.g., we just drag this file into a folder, and it handles this kind of give and go. But let's go ahead and learn how to do it on the front end with a built-in tool here. So that's really cool. We're going to go first say... What is the uh, main service looked for in this transcript? So to be clear, this is a service agency. Let's go ahead and see what it comes up with here. So it's going to search the file and let's get a relevant information. All right, so as you see here, the main service sought in the transcript involves automations for responding to property inquiries. Rumen wants a system that automates replies to leads from property listings. The system should use templates. This is right on, right on the dot. This is what was discussed. But here's what's so amazing about this kind of stuff. So if you can do really long calls or you don't necessarily want to go with the automation route, you can find specific things within a transcript that maybe you forgot later on or need to refer back to. So for example, we could say, can you generate all the questions and answers found in the call? So let's just get all the relevant information. What was asked and what was answered. This can always be a good way to see, uh, you know, for future calls, what you need to know and stuff of this nature. So as you see here, we got this question one. Uh, essentially, you get leads for properties and you just want to automation in regards to replying to those leads. That's correct. So no matter what, those three variables always show up correct. Okay. And we kind of proceed from there. Now, one thing I want to point out is uh, what are the, you know, when you respond to email, are you using Gmail? We're using Outlook. One thing I want to point out is this little one is almost in the context of just downloading the file again. So I think in the future, what they plan on doing maybe is giving a little bit better ways of, you know, showing exactly where the data is extracted. But just for your reference, that little one just gives you, you know, places to go. So knowing that, you could take this a step further here, add a little bit of context, we could say, okay, please give me a possible outline for a uh, statement of work, which is going to spell it out. Statement of work. So this is typically found at the end of contracts, Exhibit A, Amendment 1, on uh, the context of, you know, what we're trying to do here. So this kind of misinterpreted what I was trying to do here. We're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to say, okay, please give me an outline of statement of work here uh, based on this transcript. And we're going to say uh, deliverable. We're going to say, all right, so we're going to go ahead and point out objective scope of work deliverables based off that transcript. I may need to re-upload it, but let's see if it gets accurate here. Okay. Okay, perfect. So let's go ahead and see what the output is here. Now, this might not be perfect. Obviously, we could probably give more context here. A really powerful tool you can use in ChatGPT to make sure the outputs are consistent with what you care about is custom instructions. Can't stress this enough. If you watch videos in the past, I, I cannot stress this enough. If you have issues with ChatGPT, you're dealing with bad outputs and you're dealing with inaccuracies in those outputs, 
Custom Instructions is your Eureka Effect. Custom Instructions is the crypto night to solve those issues. Learn how to use it. I may link that up there as well, but I've done a video on it as well. But Custom Instructions is probably one of the most extremely undervalued things you can do with ChatGPT right now because of the fact that there's a lack of education and understanding of what it means. But as you see here, we got the objective, we got the scope of work, and we got deliverables based off that transcript. We could ask further questions here, but I think you can get a good idea of what is capable with ChatGPT in the context of docs now. This seems like a really powerful tool um, for school and educational stuff like essays and just helping you write essays. Um, this kind of stuff did not exist back in the day. Uh, it is a little bit worrisome though because of the fact that of how good it is. It really just shows you long-term. Um, I, As I've said before on this channel, I think the way you look at ChatGPT is how you look at calculator in math. In theory, with a really complex math problem, you could do it without a calculator, but we still use calculators. Why? Because it, it makes it more effective. We can do stuff faster. And the real value there is learning how to use the calculator to solve complex problems. That's kind of, that's kind of how I see ChatGPT. Don't see it as Oh, if I, if I lean in too much, I don't want to rely on ChatGPT too much because that's bad to be reliant on something like that. But actually in reality, you tell that to someone that does complex math problems, you're going to need a calculator. I think it's like a T84. I forgot the exact terminology, but look at ChatGPT the same way. This is extremely powerful. I cannot stress that enough, but without further ado, leave, make sure to leave a like if you found value in today's video is completely free. If you like this kind of video, you can go ahead and check out a playlist at the end here where we dive into more ChatGPT tutorials like this, uh, specifically looking at plugins or just other functions that ChatGPT now has. It does seem like they're leaning towards having most plugins become native features, unless you're a very unique idea, which is really cool. Also, one other thing I wanna point out as I was playing with ChatGPT today, they, um, you know, pretty like a couple months ago, it was always that the knowledge was up to uh, September of 2021, if I remember correctly. But now the knowledge is up to april of 2023 we're getting advanced here so without further ado i'll see you in the next video thanks for tuning in and yes surprise i'm an ai avatar make sure to explore more here at corbin ai where we demystify ai for your personal and business life until next time